Hello, welcome to How to Soundproof a Room. My name's Mike Trabolsi. I'm a drummer, songwriter, composer, and a Berklee College of Music alumni. And I'm in the middle of building and soundproofing a home recording studio. And I thought I would share with you some of the materials and techniques that I decided to use to help soundproof this room. I'll start briefly with the construction because this is new construction and there are a few things you can consider if you are building a new room. First of all, steel is better than wood in terms of preventing the transmission of sound from one room to another. But obviously this is an addition to my house, so steel really wasn't a practical choice. Also, I know in recording studios and the wall structures, often they'll use cinder blocks filled with sand. And again, that wasn't a practical or a necessary um, consideration for my application. So I went with traditional 2x6, 16 inches on center framing. One choice you will have to make is there's a product they make today, a gypsum board, which has a layer of soundproofing material in between. There's several companies that make this kind of a product, and this is installed directly onto the studs. And what this gypsum board does is help uh, prevent the transmission of sound and absorb the sound wave. However, it is my understanding from speaking with some of these companies that that type of a product works better for 24 inches on center framing. And as I just mentioned, I went with 16 inches on center framing, so that wasn't a... Um, product that I could use directly onto the studs. However, on my uh, roof system, I did use trusses and those are framed 24 inches on center. So I did use that kind of a product on the ceiling, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. So quickly, my, my, uh, my floor is a four inch thick slab. It's raised about a foot and a half and beneath it is about two to three foot of three quarter inch stone. I'm up here in the mountains of the Northeast and my house is sort of built into a hill area we get a lot of snow in the winters and a lot of snow melt and runoff in the spring and I, I don't really have a high water table here but like I said we do get a lot of runoff and I just didn't want any uh, water issues so that's why it's raised a little bit with that much stone and I also have a drainage system uh, based on gravity and it's actually working remarkably well um, this is my first uh, spring with this addition here. So the, uh, what I'm getting at is, in terms of soundproofing the floor, I'm not doing anything other than what's already here. On top of the slab, I'm going to put down a, um, an engineered hardwood floating floor. And that's really it. So I'm mostly concerned with the soundproofing aspect of the walls and the ceiling. So let's first talk about the insulation. I needed a product that would obviously have really good insulating properties, but at the same time would aid in the prevention of the transmission of sound and help to soundproof this room. There were four products that I was considering. One was the, your traditional fiberglass insulation. The second was what they call cellulose or blown-in insulation. The third was closed cell spray foam insulation. And the fourth is a product which I decided to go with called Rock Cell. I had spoken to several of my friends in the music production and engineering department at Berkeley College of Music in Boston, and they were involved with the construction of Berkeley's new recording studios. And it seemed for my application, a Rock Cell would be a good solid choice to use. So I have used three well, uh, three of these kind of products. The first is an R23. It's called Rock Cell Comfort Bat. And this is a very dense insulation. It's five and a half inches thick. And it comes in bats four feet, um, four foot in length by, in my case, I, for 16 inches on center framing, it's 15 inches wide. And they also make it for 24 inches on center framing. <clears throat> But the, uh, the, the product for the 16 inches on center framing, it fits nicely into the cavity. What you do is you just squeeze it a little bit, and then it expands, expands and fills up the whole cavity. 
uh, very nicely as a matter of fact. It packs in really tight and fills up all the air cavities. And that's one of the key components in insulating is you want to prevent any air infiltration into the room. And this packed in really great. So I use this R23 on my three exterior walls. That back wall is, abuts my house, and I've done something different to that, which I'll go over in a minute. The second product I use, and I use this on the ceiling here, and also up in the roofing structure on the second floor, is um, this is also a rock cell comfort bat. And this is an R30. It's uh, seven and a half inches thick. And it also comes in bats of uh, four foot in length. And uh, this is for 24 inches on center framing. So I think this was 22 and a half inches wide. I use this in the whole ceiling on the first floor here. And then what I did was I went up on the second floor. And because I used trusses, I, I built a five foot knee wall. And I used this product, a second layer of this, behind all the knee walls. So there's a good portion of the ceiling that actually has... 15 inches of this uh, rock cell insulation. The last, the last insulating product I used was, and this, this is um, called rock cell safe and sound. They don't advertise it as having an R value, but when I spoke to them, uh, don't quote me on this, but I think it was an R11 or an R13. But I used this in between the walls between my house and this is specifically made <clears throat> to prevent the transmission of sound from one room to another so I put a layer on this on the whole back wall and then on the inside of the house I put another layer of this so I actually have two layers of this three inch thick uh, rock cell safe and sound product <clears throat> and that's what I've done with the insulating part of the studio the next thing I did, and this is a critical step in terms of uh, soundproofing a room, and I did what's called decoupling of the walls. I've actually built a room within a room, and I've used two products to accomplish that goal. The first, and by the way, they, there's several companies out there that make all different kinds of, <clears throat> of these clips, which I'm showing you now. I decided to this to go with this one by a company called the Green Glue Company. And this is called the Green Glue Residential Style Noise Proofing Clip. And they do make a commercial style, which contrary to what you might be thinking now, um, is actually not as, as beefy as this clip. Um, but it probably would have been fine, but I just decided to go with this one. I like the design of it. And it's a metal clip. And what this does is this attaches directly to your studs by way of a two and a half inch coarse thread drywall screw, screw on the top and on the bottom. And you install these per their installation instructions, which is listed on their website. You install these throughout the room. And then what you do is you take a 25 gauge, 7 8 inch steel furring channel. This is also often called a hat channel. Uh, I assume because it, if you look at it this way, it looks like a hat, the way it's shaped. And what you do is this hat channel snaps into this noise proofing clip. And it creates a space. In this case, with these two products, the space is an inch and a half between the stud and the face of the steel firming channel, which is where your sheet walk or drywall, whatever finished product is going to go against and you create a space all the way around the room in ear space and what happens is you put your drywall product you attach your drywall product to the steel firming channel and it's very important that you do not when you're screwing your drywall product into the steel firming channel you do not want to screw into the studs because that will compromise <coughs> excuse me the integrity of the system you're trying to build and that will help prevent the transmission of sound through the structure so I've built this all the way around the room and in a few minutes I'll get behind the camera and film film it so you can really see up and see some close-ups of, of what it looks like on the um, <clears throat> on the ceiling as I mentioned my ceiling is framed with trusses 24 inches on center 
So I decided to use a product called Quiet Rock Easy Snap. And this is a gypsum board. And in the middle of this is a layer of a soundproofing material. And it's manufactured right into the board. And this connects, this screws directly into the studs. I didn't want to use the steel firm channel on my ceiling because already the, the, uh, the height of the, uh, from the floor to the ceiling, from the top of the slab to the joist is 7 feet 5 inches. And I, I didn't want to lower that anymore. So I used this product, which is perfectly acceptable to install on a ceiling. And there are some, by the way, that are, that are too heavy to install. So whatever you, product you decide to use, make sure that it's suitable for ceiling installation. And this uh, attached directly to the studs and uh, they uh, was installed just like you would any drywall product. So between, between that, uh, and that's 5 8 inch by the way, between that, uh, Quiet Rock Easy Snap with the sound absorption material uh, manufactured into it in the, uh, the very thick uh, um, rock cell comfort pad, I'm reasonably confident that it will do a good job in um, soundproofing that part of the room. So the, um, the next thing that you will want to consider is all of your electrical outlets and light switches. Those are areas where sound can transmit through. So there's uh, multiple of these kind of products which I'm going to show you now on the market. I went with a product called Quiet Putty. And um, actually I think it's made by the same company that makes the Quiet Walk. And it's seven inches square, and it's kind of like a, <clears throat> like a Play-Doh, like that stuff you'd have when you were a kid. It's, it's a very pliable product that can be bent and molded and shaped around any object. It's about an eighth of an inch thick, and it comes, as you can see, with just a paper back. And, and this covers all your outlets and electrical switches. And I had to do a little measuring and cutting, but um, <clears throat> it was really easy to install. And... Um, this will help prevent the sound through all of those areas in your room. The last thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to, uh, in my case, I'm going to use two layers of 5 8 inch blue board attached to the walls. So the first layer of blue board will just get attached as is all the way around the room. What I'm going to do with the second layer is I'm going to use a product called Green Glue Compound. And this comes in tubes or it comes in five gallon um, buckets. And this is just uh, applied freely to, the, to your blue board. And then this is on the second layer of blue board. And you attach that second layer of blue board with this green glue compound directly over the first layer. And that green glue compound will help absorb the sound. And it's also important to note that when you install your drywall product, and in my case it's going to be five eighths inch, uh, two layers of five eighths inch blue board, you want to, you don't want it to touch the floor, and you don't want it to touch the ceiling. It, it can't touch in the corners where it meets. So when you install it, you just shim the floor so you have a, a quarter inch space between the slab and your and your blue board, and then a quarter inch space at the top, and then there's a sealant uh, that you can use. I'm going to use. Uh, the same a sealant by the Green Glue Company called Green Glue Sealant. And you just put a quarter inch bead all along the bottom and all along the top. So your drywall product is just has no contact with the ceiling and the, and the floor. It's just hanging on your steel firming channel. So what will happen when that's all done, and I'm going to have that plastered by the way. <clears throat> if I did not use a system, when a sound is made in this room, it would typically hit my drywall product and go straight into the studs and straight outside or straight into the to the uh, rest of my house now what's going to happen when a sound is made in this room it's going to hit the plaster then it's going to go have to go through my first layer of 5 8 inch blue board then it's going to hit the layer of green glue compound which is a a, a, a sound absorbing material and then it's going to go through another layer of 5 8 inch blue board then it's going to hit my steel furring ch channel and from there, there's really no way for the sound to transmit through the studs. But I have an inch and a half of ear, a, sp a whole space, all around the room. 
And then I have the five and a half inches of Loxel comfort bat insulation and soundproofing material. Then it's going to have to go through the sheathing on the outside of my building and then through the uh, cedar shingles and clapboards on that side. So I'm very confident that all of those uh, materials uh, working together will, will effectively soundproof this one. So at this time, I'm going to get around the other side of the camera and just film a little bit so you can see what it all looks like. So my studio is 40 by 28. And you will note I do have some windows in here, which generally you would not find in a recording studio. However, I'm going to be spending a lot of time in this one, and I wanted to bring in some natural light. Okay. So let me first show you the insulation here. And you can see it's packed in very tightly. Very nice, fills up all the air cavities. <clears throat> all right, let me get a close up here of the noise proofing clip and the steel furring channel. So you can see how the clip is screwed into the stud and the steel firming channel snaps right into that clip. <clears throat> and there's really, really good installation instructions on the uh, Green Glue website about how to install this, but I'll just tell you basically the bottom row of the steel firming channel is not, can't be greater than three inches from the floor. And in my case, I went two inches from the floor. Then I went up 24 inches for the first row, 24 for the second, 24 for the third, and then a little less than 24 to get to the top row, which they state you do not want greater than six inches, <clears throat> excuse me, from the ceiling. And in my case, I did four inches from the ceiling. And then on, on another part of the room, I decided to go a little less than that three. So what I ended up with was five rows of this hat channel or steel firming channel. And when I did the windows, I just went in between and around. And uh, there are things, by the way, that you can do after the room is built and completed to address the sound, uh, the sound transmission through the glass. But that's another topic for another video. And I will show you the ceiling here with the Quiet Rock Easy Snap. <clears throat> Came out great and just installs just like sheet rock, blue board. And I'm going to uh, have a base applied to that and then plaster have the whole ceiling plastered. So I'll put this camera back here. <clears throat> so that's basically what I've done to um, soundproof this room. There's a lot of methods and materials out there that can you can use. This is just one way you can do it. And um, <clears throat> I feel reasonably confident that this will be very effective in soundproofing this room. And I hope it gave you some ideas um, in your own soundproofing projects. I want to thank you for tuning in today. Again, my name's Mike Trabolsi. If you're interested in seeing me play the drums, you can go to YouTube and type in my name, Mike Trabolsi. And uh, there's some videos up there, and I hope you enjoy those. And also, you can get my website through there, and uh, I can be contacted by email through my website. So thanks again for watching, and I want to wish you the best of luck with your soundproofing project.